If you want to get started with unit testing in JavaScript, this is the right video for you. I'll give you an introduction to the popular testing tool Jest and explain what test-driven development is all about. Let's get started. We have an empty npm project with just a package.json file. We will now create some JavaScript code here, which we then want to test. In a folder src, we create a file main.js and in this file we define a function sum, which should simply calculate the sum of two past variables. This means we simply return a plus b here. We then export the function to make it available from outside. Now we want to test this code. To do this we use the open source package Jest. We simply install it via npm install Jest, save dev, because we only need it as a dev dependency and not in our production code of course. Once Jest is installed we add a run script to our package JSON. We write test Jest and now we can simply execute a unit test with the command npm run test or even shorter simply with npm test. But of course we don't have any unit tests yet. We first have to create them. For our first unit test, we create a main.test.js file in the same directory as our main.js file. In some projects, though, test files are also moved to a separate test folder. There are also often test files with .spec.js instead of .test.js or even more frequently .spec.ts for TypeScript code. Basically, it doesn't matter what the files are called and where they are located. Depending on the framework you use, like Angular, the test approach you work with, for example, test-driven development or behavior-driven development, or simply your personal preferences. There are different options to do that, but don't let this unsettle you. Technically, it always works the same. We now import our sum function into our test file so that we can use it. And then we write our first unit test. To do this, we simply write test and define a name. In this case, adds one plus two to equal three. And then define the actual test. We expect one plus two to equal three. This means we write expect sum one two to be three. We now run the test by simply executing npm test and then we get the result. The test has been successfully executed. Great, that was easy. NPM test now runs all tests of the project. However, you may often only want to run certain tests that you have just changed, or you may want to automate the whole process during development. For this purpose, you can install an extension for VS Code. There are many that are very similar. One, for example, is Jest Test Explorer, which I will show you briefly. As soon as we have installed and activated this extension, we can go to the testing tab in the sidebar and can now display all the tests in the project. So far, of course, there's only one. And we can also execute the test in the test file now with just one single click. What we can also do now is to always run the tests automatically and not manually. This can sometimes be annoying, but I would recommend that you try it out. To do that, click on Enable Auto Run. We have created a very simple function and created a very simple test for it. And that brings us straight to a crucial point of unit tests. Which tests are useful and which are not? It is difficult to give a universal answer to this question. What certainly makes sense, however, is not just to feed a function with valid data, but also to try to enter invalid data, if this is possible, depending on how your application is structured. For example, if a user creates the input for this function. So let's create a second test. And here we want to test whether if I pass one and the string hello, undefined is returned. And this is what we write in the test, expect some one hello to be undefined. We immediately see that the tests are now being run again and the first test is still successful, but the second test has failed. And why? We can see that too, of course, the famous JavaScript quirk that in this case a string is concatenated and we get one hello. It would therefore make sense to improve the implementation of the sum function to return an error or undefined in such cases. And this is a good example of test-driven development. Test-driven development is an approach in which tests are written before the actual code. And this should encourage developers to consider the exact requirements of their code and how the interfaces will be used before implementation. This approach can lead to fewer bugs, better design and more maintainable code. And the whole thing follows the so-called red-green refactor pattern. You first write a test for a new feature. This test initially fails because the feature has not yet been implemented and the test is therefore red. In the next step, we write the minimum code to require to pass the test. Don't think too much about whether this is the best implementation at this point. It should only solve the problem. We do this and add a corresponding check in our main.js file and simply check for both past parameters a and b whether they are not a number and if they are we simply return. And we can already see the test is now green. Great! 
The third step in test-driven development is refactor. This involves taking another close look at the code and trying to optimize it, improving the structure, readability and the performance if necessary, without changing its behavior. Afterwards, the test should of course still work. We don't need to optimize anything for this example and are just happy with the result. But these three steps are basically what test-driven development is all about. If you write a lot of tests, you will encounter many challenges. I would like to give you a few tips for structuring and a better overview. First of all, you can group tests within a file with a describe. For example, we group all the tests of the sum function here and just give it a name. We can now run all the tests in this group together and we also have these tests now grouped in the testing overview. Another feature of Jest is the creation of a coverage, which allows you to see how much code you have covered with tests and how much you have not. To do this, we create a jest.config.json file and set the value of collect coverage to true. If we now run our tests, we will see that a coverage folder has been created in the project. In it, we find a report with an index.html file that we can display in the browser. And here we now have an overview of our entire project and we can see that we have a 100% coverage. Excellent! And a little unrealistic. The advantage of the coverage is that as soon as we add more code to the project, we see if tests are missing. We simply do this, for example, and create a diff function in the main file. The tests have now been run automatically and we can update the report and see that we no longer have 100% coverage. And we can even see what is not covered for a file. This can be really helpful to recognize exactly which functions, but also which cases and conditions within functions are not covered yet. And that's it for this little introduction to unit testing with Chest. I would really appreciate a like or comment for this video. Of course, you can also follow my channel. Thank you so much. See you next time.